My name is Buba. I was born in Senegal and I grew up in Mali. Growing up, I would feel dizzy at times and also lightheaded. And when we did feel those symptoms, we missed it because it wasn't so bad. I played college basketball, I was very active. I used to exercise almost every day. Uh, when I felt sick, uh, funny enough, I was actually running a boot camp. So, and I couldn't keep up with the guys that I was trying to coach. And then I started dating Desiree. Uh, I think about a month or two that I started developing sharp chest pains. So we went to the emergency room and they noticed that my heart was larger than normal. That was interesting because it, life became much more serious all of a sudden than it had, had been before. I think we were nervous about kind of managing his condition, but he was doing really well at the time. In 2016, I was selected for a fellowship uh, in California. About two days after I arrived, my symptoms came back again, and this time I was uh, feeling worse, but we didn't know how bad it was or what was really causing it initially. It was actually a congenital condition. You know, the whole time, of course, you're panicked because you know that he's in ICU, you know that he has heart failure. So I was with the cardiologist by myself. Booba's in ICU, my family's across the world, and he says Booba's sort of course of action at this point was, was heart transplant. We got to the point, I, I would say decades earlier than we thought we would. So I thought if he's ever gonna need a heart transplant, hopefully it would be in his 50s. <laughs> he did introduce the idea of the LVAD. And then when the pump came, everything was uh, different from that on. I just <laughs> felt strong um, and I felt good. We often get the question, oh, it must be so hard to just wait for a transplant. And I say, well, we're not waiting. Because if you're just sitting there waiting, it, can, it, it will drive you nuts. <laughs> so yeah. we just have to keep living as we normally would. You have all of these dreams and plans as a couple. And then when something like this happens, there's a piece of you that wonders, like, what's life going to look like? Well, funny enough, life does keep going. Even though you get all this like crazy news or you have to go through this big surgery, it's like the sun comes up the next morning and the days keep coming. We're making the best of it today. And I will usually tell people that uh, I live today like it's two days. So I know the transplant is not a cure. Uh, I know the health body is not a cure either. So heart disease is gonna be with me for life regardless. So I try to think about it in a way that whenever I am, I will have to manage at that moment. So this moment I have the LVAD, so the goal for me right now is to maximize that time.